Now, an emeritus news brief, I'm Lynn Houston. The biggest increase in unemployment in 34 years, crumbling infrastructure, and a lagging education system has prompted President-elect Obama to announce the biggest public works initiative since the 1950s. Obama made the announcement saying his economic team is formulating a plan to provide at least 2.5 million jobs. We won't just throw money at the problem. We'll measure progress by the reforms we make and the results we achieve by the jobs we create, by the energy we save, by whether America is more competitive in the world. Today, I'm announcing a few key parts of my plan. First, we will launch a massive effort to make public buildings more energy efficient. Our government now pays the highest energy bills in the world. We need to change that. We need to upgrade our federal buildings by replacing old heating systems and installing efficient light bulbs. That won't just save you, the American taxpayer, billions of dollars each year. It will put people back to work. Second, we will create millions of jobs by making the single largest new investment in our national infrastructure since the creation of the federal highway system in the 1950s. We'll invest your precious tax dollars in new and smarter ways. And we'll set a simple rule. Use it or lose it. If a state doesn't act quickly to invest in roads and bridges in their communities, they'll lose the money. Third, my economic recovery plan will launch the most sweeping effort to modernize and upgrade school buildings that this country has ever seen. We will repair broken schools, make them energy efficient, and put new computers in our classrooms. Because to help our children compete in a 21st century economy, we need to send them to 21st century schools. As we renew our schools and highways, we'll also renew our information superhighway. It is unacceptable that the United States ranks 15th in the world in broadband adoption. Here in the country that invented the internet, every child should have the chance to get online. And they'll get that chance when I'm president, because that's how we'll strengthen America's competitiveness in the world. In addition to connecting our libraries and schools to the internet, we must also ensure that our hospitals are connected to each other through the Internet. And that is why the economic recovery plan I'm proposing will help modernize our health care system. And that won't just save jobs, it will save lives. We will make sure that every doctor's office and hospital in this country is using cutting-edge technology and electronic medical records so that we can cut red tape, prevent medical mistakes, and help save billions of dollars each year. These are just a few parts of the economic recovery plan that I will be rolling out in the coming weeks. When Congress reconvenes in January, I look forward to working with them to pass a plan immediately. We need to act with the urgency this moment demands to save or create at least two and a half million jobs so that the nearly two million Americans who've lost them know that they have a future. And remember General Eric Shinseki, the former Army Chief of Staff, who was forced from his job by the White House after telling Congress it would take a troop surge to control Iraq after the invasion? Well, President Bush was forced to do just that in early 2007. General Shinseki has a new job. President-elect Obama has appointed him the new Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Saving the auto industry has prompted several weekend meetings on Capitol Hill. Democratic leaders and the White House have come up with an agreement to loan the Detroit automakers 15 to 17 billion dollars to keep them alive until a comprehensive bailout can be worked out next year. The money will come from an automotive alternative energy development fund. Sources tell Emeritus News that because the White House has accepted the plan, there's a split among some congressional Republicans, with many siding with the White House, therefore making it likely that a bailout bill will pass this week and be signed by the President. And the Mortgage Bankers Association says one in ten homeowners with a mortgage is either behind in their payments or facing foreclosure. Friday's release of third quarter statistics shows the percentage of loans in the process of foreclosure setting a new record. The latest on the biggest issues in public policy at emeritusnews.com. That's an Emeritus News Brief. I'm Lynn Houston.